Okie dokie. Good evening, everybody. So, um, I was walking today and I was thinking, first of all, first of all I was thinking the following thing. And I've been mean, thinking about this recently, but it really hit me today. You know, I always, I, for those from Amakad all know that I, I, I'm a grandchild of four Holocaust survivors. And I always wondered, what if it would be me? I mean, any, any child or grandchild of, of survivors thinks to themselves this question because you grow up with these stories. It's the, your parents, your grandparents uh, that had those experiences in the Holocaust. And so it's natural you could think, well, my Bobby, my Zadie, my Safta, my Saba, my, my dad, my mom, they went through that. What if, what if it would have been me? And it, I was really thinking that there's no doubt in my mind for my children, when they grow up, they'll be telling this Mitzvah Shem to their children and grandchildren. Uh, and then I'll be telling this to my grandchildren as well. I was thinking, what is a story I want to tell them? W what do I want to tell my children? No, they're eyewitnesses. So I really can't, I can't script that story, but hopefully they're, 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 they're witnessing it. Um, but for my grandchildren and for myself and for my legacy, you know, what is the story I'm going to say? We, I, very often I've said, stories about survivors in the camps of the amazing acts they did. And I was really thinking about this on, uh, on my walk. And, and I was thinking that really for all of us who are part of this class, whether you're watching it live or listening uh, to, the, to the recordings, it, we, we are, we are working on our own story in order to be the, as successful as possible. Because as I mentioned before, it's Adik Ben Munasu Yichya, to the extent we'll be successful during this, this uh, uh, challenge and, and dangerous time, uh, a dangerous time for the world and for us as uh, obviously individuals, but really uh, at some level, it's also a test and a challenge for all of us um, because all of our lives have been radically affected. Um, what, 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 what are, are we rising to that occasion? And there's the only, the, the most important thing to be able to rise to the occasion of, of fulfilling our potential in this challenge and to thriving. And it certainly is, is a Muna and Bitochon. And the other thing that, you know, I, I must say, you know, this year has helped me and hopefully it's helping. I know I've gotten some very positive emails, uh, but I, I think about this year because I think, what am I gonna say to, you know, it's when I, when I give my drushes every week, I, I always, and, I, and, and I, I've said this many times, I only speak about something I truly believe. So if I'm going to give this share, I think to myself, I really, I, I need to feel this. And I need to know what I'm saying makes, not only is it true in Torah, but do I feel it in the depth? And like today I felt, like as I was walking, I really felt that this is going to pass. I, I really felt, you know, that the, the chesed of Hashem, why did I feel this chesed of Hashem? Because I'm walking along the street today and I'm thinking to myself, Wow, the sun is here. Uh, Hashem made the sun. Hashem, I'm looking at the grass. I'm thinking about photosynthesis. I'm, I'm seeing, I'm hearing, I'm seeing miracles, chasti Hashem, all around me. Hashem is still involved in every aspect of the world, of the world. And this little microbe, which can come and go, I'm thinking, Hashem created this, Hashem will take it away. And I really, I felt intimately, I mean, actually, I was also thinking, and I had seen this recently, so it's mamish chasti Hashem that, Going, there was not one drop of rain in California the whole February, which was would have put us into a drought. Uh, I see Moshe Snyder's on, 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 the, on the call, I'm sure he can tell you all the ramifications of what that would mean. We'd be in a drought. Can you imagine being quarantined and on top of that having to worry about water? <laughs> can you imagine that? And literally, a mom Shanice in March, six feet fell on the Sierra Nevada, six feet of snow. It's, 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 snow, it's raining tonight in, in Los Angeles. It's a little bit of rain here also. So it's like, look at them. And I really, I felt uh, just looking at the world, you know, and seeing all of the good, all of the chas de Hashem in the world that this is going to pass. You know, I just, Hashem is constantly giving in this world. And once, for whatever reason, we pass our nisyanis and Kali Yisrael, we're, we're, we're going to move on and we're going to Hashem, we're going to be better Jews, more matzliach, how that Mashiach should come, but definitely closer to Mashiach. And I thought, actually, of the Pasuk we said last night, it's a famous shot of the Chavetz Chaim. Uh, the Chavetz Chaim, I, I mentioned the Leshem, 
Leshem, of Shlomo Yosher, or Yosher's grandfather, Chavetz Chaim has a little bit of a different shot. It's like of all the kapshats. It says Zavta Chavetz Chaim expounds the Chavetz Chaim. It says the Chavetz Chaim the following thing: Rabbi Machogim the Rasha. Many of the agonies of the of the wicked, and and we explained why last night. The two explanations it says the Chavetz Chaim v'habotech v'Hashem chasid yisavenu. But the person who has bitachon v'Hashem is surrounded by chasid. Frek the Chavetz Chaim. Ask the Chavetz Chaim. What does it mean by habotech v'Hashem chasid yisavenu? It's somebody who is uh, uh, so, who is who is who is Hashem that they have chesed that they're surrounded by chesed. But Chaim says a, a, a remarkable thing. But Chaim says that when you have trust in God, it's like a pill. Like you know, the old days, the pills itself were very bitter, and it, it, it have it, it had a bad taste. But if you have a capsule. You don't taste the bitterness. You don't. It doesn't. The, the bitterness doesn't. It doesn't bother you. And really, a person who's boteach by Hashem, a person who has trust in Hashem, you you, you don't. Obviously, you you'd be, you'd be a, an ostrich, or you'd be, you know, not re- living a real life if you don't realize the dangers and the person's not concerned. But a boteach by Hashem, you you're able to take the pill, and it's not bitter for you personally. You're able to living it. And as I was walking today, thinking about the snow in the Sierra Mountains, that we have snow now, that it's raining, and the, the sun's still here, and I can see, I thought, I really, I, I had this deep hergesh, this deep feeling like, we'll be good. It, it, this, this, this will pass. And I, I thought about that because I was thinking to myself, like, my grandparents, when they went through the Holocaust, they, they got through it. You get, you, and whatever the bad that happened, Klal Yisrael, Many, many brachas happened afterwards. The Torah will rebuild itself. Israel came into existence, etc. We'll get through this. And I really, I felt this Chavetz time that if you trust in Hashem, the bitterness that surrounds us, it's, it's surrounded by a pole. Chesed, the chesed of, uh, that surrounds us comes from bitachon. The more bitachon, the more trust and faith in Hashem we have, the, the better off will be in, in serving in Hashem. And, and, and I just want to remind what I said in the beginning. Really, we're going to look at this time period in our lives, guaranteed. I, 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 I said this in the first class, I'm going to reiterate now. Some people on the phone call are older than me, I know. But I don't, I don't think even for the oldest person on this call, there has been, uh, and I can see this on the call, uh, there has been anything in your life or my life for the world uh, as traumatic, as earth-shattering as what we're going throughout uh, throughout the world today—the panic, the fear, the financial impact, and certainly the health uh, and ramifications, uh, the, the 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 danger for our, our older population or, sick, or, or, or people who are co- uh, compromised uh, physically—nothing. I don't think anything in our lifetime on, on, for, for the whole world can compare to what we're all going through now and how we do that will be a large part of our legacy. And if we change, if we improve our lives, uh, that would be not just we got through it, we made it, we tell stories. That's really for ourselves, we should know. This is very important. Why Hashem give it for us to be in this generation? I mean, I wasn't supposed to live my parents or grandparents or my great-grandparents' generation. I'm supposed to be here now. We're all supposed to be here now. We're supposed to be gaining today from our experiences. It's not just that we can tell stories of, wow, I did this and I, and I, and I davened at home and it was my best davening. No, we're really supposed to be getting the, the message uh, for all of us. And the only way to get that message and the only way to be successful, the only way to be thriving throughout this, as I mentioned last, last night, calm, um, is really through Bitochem because Bitochem tells us that everything comes from Hashem, Mamish, everything. As I mentioned last night, that we're all supposed to be in the places we are because of Hashem. We're supposed to be experiencing this traumatic, dangerous, it is dangerous, and I just want to reiterate to everybody to be taking uh, the proper precautions, but to experiencing this because we're supposed to have this in our lives and we're all supposed to be getting a personal message besides an integrated message for the world and any adjustment the world is going to make as, as a whole. Uh, and it's not just that, you know, as, as I was thinking as I came in here, really, you know, you look at the news, uh, it's a little bit less panic today, I think, for whatever reason. I think people get used to insanity. 
that it's still insane and still playing in panic. Uh, this learning to talk on, whether it's this class or any class that we talk on, really uh, is a dose of sanity uh, because you can read the news and think that it's who knows what and different stories and different angles. But ultimately, a botech knows that everything comes from Hashem. And be'etzem, intrinsically, Hashem wants to give the world what's good. And if we need a wake-up call as a world, or certainly as individuals, I can tell you personally, I'm a rabbi. Um, I, I look at my first, one of, I, one of my primary uh, goals in life is to inspire others. That's not the only. Uh, and I have, honestly, I, I'm, I don't think I've had to work on my Judaism as much the past 10 days or two weeks than I don't remember how long. I, I just don't, I, I, and, I, and I'm not talking about, I'm not talking about inspiration. I'm talking about thought process. I'm talking about um, really looking at what's really important in life, what I want to be doing with my, my, myself, how God really, what he expects from all of us. And that, the only way you get that is to think, to know <laughs> that Hashem did this not only for the world, but for you and I, and everyone here. So that's why Bitochan is so really important. Okay, so without uh, further ado on that, I want to actually get further uh, in, the, in, the, in the safer. So the Beis Alevi, the Beis Alevi says, says as follows. So we, we were talking about, actually last night, just for those who are on the call or not, or listening, um, we, we, you know, we did all the questions that people had asked them to talk on. So just to get back to the Sefer, and, and he was talking about that no human being, and, and again, I'm reading a Sefer, we're, we're learning about slavery, you know, when we learn about talk on, it could be that we're scared of a boss, or, or, or in, in the time of the communists, or the czar, or if you would have been in a, in a different time or place, from crusades, or the Black Plague. <laughs> uh, I have a good history class in the Black Plague. We, you know, dangers from human beings, whether it's a, a neighbor or from anyone else, but the same you said is from 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 magifas or for or jobs or for in general anxieties in general. There's nobody who could hurt you or me. It means they may be a messenger, they may be the person who, who does that, but ultimately speaking, not no one can prick us, nobody can hurt us, nobody can damage us unless God decrees it. Which means obviously if you you you, you attack uh a terrorist, you're gonna, you, you now put yourself in a situation of danger, you'll need more merits to be successful. But it means going on your day in day life, no one's able to hurt you or me uh, unless God it, it decrees it. It, it decrees it. Uh, that the person or the COVID-19 or anything else in this world is only a stick from God. You know, if you get hit by a stick, you know it's not the stick that hit you. It's a person that hit you. And the marshal that the Beis HaLevi, who Soloveitchik is, is bringing down, is really based on a Pasuk in Yeshaya. It says Yeshaya, that a Syria, a Syria that Sancheriv, Isaiah says, they are just my stick. You think that Assyria is hurting you? You think it's Hezbollah? You think it's Iran? Just parenthetically, as, as, as another thing I was thinking in my walk, Hashem, can you imagine Israel has to go into total lockdown right now? If they had to worry about Iran, Iran has it much worse. You know, Hashem made Iran have a terrible, terrible, terrible. And then he gave it. Can you imagine Iran was walking around the streets with nothing? It would be a great time to attack Israel. You really, you can feel the Chaz de Hashem. But Assyria or Iran or this COVID, it's just a stick. It's all from Hashem. It's also, it says the base of another person, you know, it's like, it's like an ax. Now, if you're going to deal with a human being, you feel threatened by a country, you feel threatened by a person, you feel threatened by a boss, you feel threatened by a neighbor sometimes, unfortunately, and these people end up in my office, you feel threatened by an in-law, a brother-in-law, a sister-in-law, a mother-in-law, a daughter-in-law, a son-in-law, a brother, a sister, a mother, a father, a child. You feel they're going to hurt you or they're damaging you. you. It's them who are doing it to you. Now, in real life, just like we have to take proper precautions and not get in close contact with people, 
certainly to be washing our hands. Uh, you need to do our hashtalis, our, our due diligence. So if you're dealing in human dynamics, it, we have to be, uh, uh, make our best efforts to deal with people civilly, intelligently, with seichel, and with thought out. But ultimately, uh, whether it's a human or it's COVID or, or, or anything in this world, it's all just a stick from HaKadosh Baruch Hu. And if you just think that I'm only going to focus on Iran or Hamas, there's, there'll be a different pop-up hat for Israel. Because just like in the time of the prophets, if we don't take care of the roots, the reason why things happen, if we don't remember Hashem, then this COVID can go away tomorrow, and then it could be another thing. <laughs> it's, it's infinite amounts in this world that can put us uh, in, in danger. I mentioned all the chas de Hashem of the sun came out today. I can see, you can hear me. We have, we have Zoom. Can you imagine? I, 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 I was in, interviewed by a, a newspaper on Sunday. They called me up. Uh, just how are we, how is our synagogue fair, faring uh, in COVID, I said, you know, it's an amazing thing that you have the internet today. Could you imagine that we didn't have these technology? We could have had the same quarantine without it. It, it could have easily been we've been in our house, you know, alone by ourselves with no ability to see each other and to communicate with each other, to hear shiurim or to communicate with loved ones. So there's, there's a tremendous smile that Hashem gave us to this at this time. It's, it's all from Hashem, like, but it, can be, it could be without it. So if you don't if you don't recognize where it's coming from, you're making a terrible mistake. So you get hit by a stick and you start talking to the stick. You think that the stick is the reason you got hit. Nothing more stupid, nothing more foolish than that. Uh, as I also quotes another verse in, in Isaiah. Isaiah says they were attacked by Assyria, Sancherev. It's about a hundred or so years before the destruction of the first temple. You know, the ten tribes went into exile at that point. And they're all thinking about Assyria and they're not thinking why in the world this happened. You know, what, what the Jewish people should be working on. But if you're just going to work on, on, on a vaccine, it's talking in our language today, if it's about the vaccine, or you're just going to worry about the quarantine or washing my hands, then we're missing the point, right? And we're also missing the opportunity. We're also missing the message, again, not just for the world, for us, for each one of us. Bitaka means that Hashem is talking to all of us. There's a message for us in this. And how are we going to do? What is, what is our legacy going to be? Is, is, are we praying more? Are we doing more? Are, are, we, are, we, are, we, are we working on our bitachan? Are we working on our bitachan? Are we praying for our bitachan, as, as, as I spoke about last night? Because if all we're going to do is, is worry about COVID, there could be, an, God forbid, another form in the future, and we're going to miss the opportunity, miss the boat, and we're not really dealing with the, the core issue. He said the same thing by by, by, by money, by working. Um, you know, if you, if you just work, you don't realize that you're missing uh, the, the, uh, the boat. And basically, then says it's interesting. Baman, that the mon is really is, is, is a symbol that if God doesn't decree, you're not going to make money. You, can, you know, there are people who go to all kinds of universities, even as good as the University of Pennsylvania, uh, and they don't make money. Uh, they, they, there are people who, who, who do not do things and they make money. Now, obviously, the Dara Chatev, according to the laws of nature, certain professions or jobs make more. But even with that, there are plenty of people in all kinds of professions. I know people concentrate trying to start up, and this guy makes a startup. Yeah, everything comes uh, from Hashem. And so even with our careers, certainly uh, with that, it's a very important part of a talk. We're not going to focus on that tonight. That's not really the focus of tonight's lecture. We all know, you know, you, I see this with human relatives. Uh, you, you know, again, even if you have a challenging family situation, or, you know, I just was dealing with somebody who was becoming observant and they have real challenges with their family. This is not a San Jose family. Um, there's real challenges. It's not, the relatives are just props. Really, it's, it's props. You know, they, uh, this is very deep and not really for now, but the test comes from God. You know, in tomorrow, and I, and I, I in, in my little involvement in this, I've been involved in, at some level, probably hundreds, if not thousands, of people who have become more observant. I, I, 
Sometimes I was involved in the beginning, sometimes I was involved in the end, sometimes I was involved in the middle stage, sometimes I was involved in the, but I, many, many people. And that same mother or father or mother-in-law, all of a sudden, the next day, they make peace with the child. And the same, uh, the same relative who didn't like you, nothing to do with religion, they just didn't like you, all of a sudden they move on. Like, in one minute, things can change. And in one minute, there's, there, there, there's, that, there's, that, there's that game change. And why, why is it? Because really, for whatever the test of it, so when, what does a real person do if they're in a challenge? Well, they first they work on how to deal with the, the, the challenge. They pray to God. They work on themselves. They become a more humble person sometimes, a more giving person. They try to expand themselves. All challenges, all difficulties um, are opportunities to become bigger people. You know, I, I, I've said this uh, a couple of times uh, before, but never on tape. So we'll, we'll, you can know, just close your ears. Uh, you know, when I was younger, I, was a, I, I played a, a little bit too much basketball, uh, but I had a kid that I went to a basketball camp for the University of Miami when I was like, I think ninth grade. Uh, and I remember I was like, me, I went with a friend with like two yarmulkes and the rest were not Jewish, uh, largely. And I remember we were, we were younger kids and the, the, uh, the, it was the University of Miami, I think, uh, coach of the college, but assistant coach, I forgot what it was already. So they brought a team to play us. And uh, it was older and inner city kids. And we were ninth graders, and they, these guys were dunking over the ball overhead, and they creamed us. And I remember the coach said, you don't become a good captain in smooth seas. You become a great captain when you're in, in, when you're in serious conditions and you work on yourself. This really, if we're, this is our moment of godless right now, but in general life, whenever you have a challenge, and whenever you have a difficulty, that is the moment where you can look back where you could have expanded yourself. If you deal with it correctly, if you have to on. If you don't, you can literally, it could be a moment of, of, of tremendous loss and damage because uh, you, you don't stand up for the moment. The way a person will be truly be successful very often is on because you'll realize that it's coming from Hashem. And if you realize this is so important, so amazingly deep and so crucial for all of us right now, when you realize it comes from Hashem, which is what Bitochan teaches us, you realize that you can handle the challenge. That's what I talked about last night. If it was just a mother or a mother-in-law or a COVID or a person, then you think, so I can't believe this is not for me. I just is way above my, my pay grade. But if Hashem is giving it to you and me, then number one, I can handle it. It's, it's Hashem giving it to me. He's only going to give me, as I spoke about at length last night, something I can handle. He's only giving me something and it's for my best. It's there to expand me. It's there to make me bigger and greater, so that I, it's, that's, that's number one. So I, I can handle it, I can deal with it. And number two, I'll deal with it correctly. That I, not only will I deal with it in our situation right now, it will be uh, doing proper physical precautions. Well, I deal, or if you're dealing with relatives or bosses or neighbors to make tactful, intelligent decisions based on the people we're dealing with. Um, if it's career change, you, you need to you know, if you want to make money, you got to do what's necessary for your career within reason. You know, if you're having a problem having children, then you need to go to the proper doctors. But to do what's necessary, but even after all of that, to realize that it's God speaking to us, and there's a message for all of us, that if it's coming from Hashem, if Hashem's putting us into the situation, then we're supposed to be becoming bigger, better people from it. We're supposed to be doing more and using this opportunity to connect more to God and to become greater people and to pray more to God and to realize that that is where, there is where the real salvation lives. That is where the real salvation will, will, will come from. She, um, they, she yats, and he says, and sometimes he quotes the base line, says, sometimes people, if they forget about this, they'll make the wrong decision. And then what they do is, like the, the Pasek says in the Shai later on, they, they, they think they're going to get eggs, and what comes out is vipers and, and, and venomous snakes. Because if it's just to do, and we're forgetting the reason why it's coming, we get the wrong result. You know, you, you can have, unfortunately, if a person could, you know, come out of this, you know, COVID-19, and forget completely about Hashem. They could talk about global warming, and I'm not saying in the global, in probably global warming, Obviously, to whatever extent, it's a problem. It's a problem. We should deal with it. But that is not why this happened. 
and you could talk about economic policies and political, that is not the reason for this. Now we, we can make our own decisions if we, if, because if we, we, if we go on the wrong track of that, it's the wrong thing. If, you know, I remember um, once, and I don't want to get into details, I was, I was dealing with a person who had a life issue, and instead of getting the right message, they did something which is totally against the turtle and totally self-damaging. So they, in, their, in their haste to, to fix their situation, they actually made it much worse spiritually and physically. So it says the, the, the base of Levy, if you don't realize why you're getting hit by this, if you don't realize why you're in this situation, you can actually make a terrible, uh, situ a, a terrible situation out of a potential good situation. You can actually, actually distance yourself from Hashem instead of getting closer to Hashem. You can make your situation worse uh, and, and not uh, better. Um, and he says, he's actually, he says, if you think it's only up to my wisdom, I'm going to fix the economy, and who knows what's going to happen right now with the economy, if it's, then forget about Hashem, or I'm going to make a cure. You know what? The cure could bring on something else, or I'm going to do this. There's an, the, and, he, and he quotes, um, he quotes uh, Gamara. The Gamara says in Sukkah the following thing. It's actually an amazing Gamara. The Gamara says, Omer Rabbi Yechanan, Raglai, this is on Sukkah, Nun Gimel Amra, 53a. Omer Rabbi Yechanan, Raglai, the bar inish in an arvin. A person's feet are his guarantors. La Asadi, Nizman, Taman, Mobil, and Nase. To where he is summoned, they will lead him, which means it's based on the Gemara with Hillel, that if you want to end up somewhere, you're going to kind of end up there, and you'll end up in the wrong place or the better place, depending on your, what your desire is. For example, Hanutarti Kushai. Now, this is an Agatha Gemara. It's here to teach us a lesson. Hanutarti Kushai, there were two um, Kushai, a certain nation, a common nation, that were in front of King Solomon. Alicharav of Achaya, Beneshisha Soy from the Shlomo. Their names were Elicharaf and Achaya. They were the sons of Shishab and they were scribes. Yom Achad, Chazet Lamalach Hamovis, the Havaka One day, King Solomon, who was the wisest of all men, and he, and he had the ability to, as, a, as a, the, the Torah tells us, to even talk to birds. He was on a different spiritual and, uh, plane than all of us, and so on a different uh, Mensa genius is, is an understatement. He spoke to the, 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 the Malach Hamovis, the angel of death. Amrle, he saw his downcast. Amrle, Amai Itzavta, why are you so sad, Malachamas? Why are you so sad, angel of death? Amrle, to come bo mine hani tarte kushai diasvihachi. Those two kushai, Eli Kharif and Achi, I'm supposed to have them killed. And I can't get them. Masrinu, so Shlomo heard this, King Solomon heard this, he's like, oh my goodness. The, the Malcham Mavis wants to get them. Let me escape. Let me get them to escape. He gave them over and he sent them all the way um, to, to, to Luz. Now, Luz was a city where, again, this is what this means, Kabbalistically, people didn't die. That's what this, the idea of the city would have been. Uh, as they got to the gates of Luz, as they're about to walk into Luz, they were sent, they died. The Malach HaMavis got them right at the gates of Luz. Um, the next day, King Shlomo saw the Malach HaMavis, and he's smiling. He's happy. He's freelich. He's happy. Amrlei, why are you smiling? Amrlei, yesterday, but also, the Baimian and Taman Shadartinu. The place where I had to kill them, you sent them. And as the, what the Gemara is saying that these two people could have only died by the gates of Luz. Shlomo thought, and the Gemara says, actually, for a Shlomo thought, the Gemara then says, in an Arvin Bay, and you'll end a person's feet are as guarantors, la as to the Mespai Taman, you can even lead them to where you would, this could occur. So I think the way the base ladies understand this, Shlomo thought, you know what? And the Malach HaMavis, angel of death, it's coming from this people. I'll get out of it. I think the way this lady says, you know what Shlomo should have done? You hear that? You should have prayed to God. You should try to look overcome it. Don't try to outsmart the situation. 
means if we're in a situation, the first, obviously, if you're in a situation of like this, you should try to get out of it. But the first, the first response, the first response um, is to look to Hashem. You know, honestly, if I, if I would see people um, not being careful and they're hugging and kissing and they're going to very crowded places, uh, if they're going to hospitals uh, with it, if you would see a person with COVID-19 going to an old age home or you'd say you out of your mind, if you'd see an elderly person going over to, a, to, a, to in Kaiser Santa Teresa, they have people with, with coronavirus. If you see them go over, they tell you crazy. Don't you know you're endangering yourself? What are you doing? Are you endangering other people? You, you, would, you, would, be, you would be aghast. If, if, if we would do that, we'd say we're crazy with ourselves. If, if we don't realize what Bipachan is, if we don't realize what we're supposed to be doing, we should be much more, <laughs> much more missing the boats. If you see, a, you know, on the street, unfortunately, they don't, they don't hear this lesson. The, the newspapers don't, the newspapers aren't saying it. They're just giving you panic or that's, the, that's why we need this class. That's why we need to think about Hashem. But, and they rightfully should denigrate and call out people who are not being careful. But much, and you say Yish Erger, much worse than any of such people are individuals who are missing the message, who are lacking uh, bitachon. Who are, who are not hearing their personal message. As I spoke about last night at length, not having the calmness and the serenity that comes from Bitochan, not thinking about what Hashem is telling us as individuals. It's going to end tonight uh, with a story. You know, the Panavit Sharov uh, of Kahneman was known as, a, who built the Panavit Yeshiva, Grana Yeshiva, uh, after the Holocaust, he built homes for Holocaust children, Panovich for many years was the largest and strongest yeshiva in Israel. Certainly in his lifetime, it was that. And he, and he, and he started the yeshiva a few weeks before Rommel. He had escaped from Lithuania, the Panovich Sharov, is one of the greatest ages of the generation. And he started the yeshiva a few weeks before, before Rommel uh, lost in El Alamin. At the time, it looked like Israel had been conquered by the Nazis. He was a man of faith. He was a man who would go travel around the world to raise money for Torah, for yeshivas, when Rabbi Aaron Cutler, the founder of Lakewood Yeshiva, when he passed away, suddenly Lakewood had debts. He bailed out Lakewood from the debts. He was an amazing person, an amazing fundraiser. I once remarked in Shul that um, when, the, when, they, when, when Apollo went up to, to, to the moon, he asked the Satmar Rebbe, did they think they'd find any men on the, room, and the, the, on the moon? And Satmar Rebbe said, for sure not. He said, Rebbe, how do you know there's no one no on the moon? He said, because if there was anybody on the moon, the Panovich Sharov would have been up there collecting already from them. That's how much of a collector he was. He collected so much charity. Well, there was once a yeshiva called Shara Shamayim in Jerusalem. The yeshiva's head was Reb Chaim Leib Arbach. It was, it's, Shara Shamayim was a Kabbalistic yeshiva. And Reb Chaim Leib Arbach, who was the father of Reb Shlomo Zalman Arbach, the great Posek, Reb Chaim Leib Arbach, I think passed away in 1954. So Reb Chaim Leib Arbach, the yeshiva had a lot of problems, and they were finan had financial difficulties in the, in the late 1940s, early 1950s in Israel. The, the, the situation was very, very dire uh, economically. And they, they asked the Pan of Sharov to come to the, to, to the yeshiva's dinner and to speak and to motivate the crowd to give money to help them out. So the Pan of Sharov came to the yeshiva dinner, and he gave a speech all about Amuna, belief in God, all about Itacha and trust in God and faith in God, and about loving Torah. And that was his speech, and he spoke for 20 minutes, 30 minutes, whatever it was, on that topic. After they spoke, he couldn't believe it. They thought he would do a fundraiser, he would ask for money, he would do all kinds of things. After the speech, he went to the Pana and he said, Rebel, we called you here to fundraise, because you don't understand. And the Pana went, went, went around the world with no, by himself raising astronomical sons. He says, you don't understand. He says, I have no idea how to fundraise. I don't have the foggiest idea how to fundraise. But one thing I have is I have a muna and I have a talk and I have love of Torah. With that muna and the talk and love of Torah, I'm able to fundraise. Wherever our message is supposed to be for ourselves, in order to thrive, we need to have a muna and the And the more we have a muna and the uh, we'll be able to not only fundraise, but in our own situation, really, to make more than make the most of it, you know, more than have a legacy for children. So what did I do at this time? I think the most profound thing that we'd have if we have the proper, I'm going to be talking this time, is 
we'll be able to tell ourselves that I stood up to the moment, I heard my challenge, and Hashem spoke to me personally at this time, and I changed myself, and I taught myself to appreciate the time and to appreciate the opportunity of it, and I didn't waste it. The only way we'll really get that is the bitachon, and it comes from Hashem, and Hashem is giving us the test for us as well. Okay, everybody, have a great night. I'll unmute everyone. Have a great night. Pick up tomorrow Thank night. You. Okay, be well, be calm, and you too. Enjoy all, enjoy all. Okay, thank you very much. I appreciate this. Thank class. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. And I see okay. Natalie's one. Hi, Natalie. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> I'm happy you joined. Yes, thank you uh, so thank much. You <laughs> Good to see you. Good. Yeah, thank you for the class. Of course, my pleasure. Uh,